Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We've got Proxy Hatch, aka Reaper, in the top left side of the map as the Zerg. We've got a Terran player, O M T L Y C Om Omtilk. I'm going to come up with some way of pronouncing that as this goes on. But first of all, let's talk about, of course, the star of this match. His name is Reaper. Some of you may remember about a year ago, I covered a series of Reaper playing a best of three versus Dark that went for four games because they had a draw and a few other games that were very close to being draws as well. It was just like the cheesiest, dirty, like drone pulling spine crawler rushing series I've seen in a long time. But he basically for years has been a player who is relatively new to StarCraft 2 in that he's only been competing in GM for a couple of years now. And he's almost always been doing it in really cheesy ways. I first ran into him on the ladder when he played an account called 12 pool. And guess what? He did a 12 pool every single friggin' game. And I was like, are you serious? Are you trolling? Like this can't be serious. And he kept feeding me and I was like, this is kind of embarrassing. And he was like, you know, I, I like to practice. I was, I was like, are you, are you like, what, what's, what's going on? I was asking him like, you know, what is your whole goal with this? And he's like, oh, I just like to, you know, practice against the counter so I can get better. And I was like, that's just ridiculously logical. Can you just like, tell me you're an idiot you're a pro gamer who's smurfing around or something and he's like no i just just trying to get good at it learning different responses and ways to follow it up to trick the opponent and i'm like okay you're actually just a lovely human reaper's also been streaming a bunch recently as well so i'll drop a link to his uh, twitch stream down below in the description you guys can go check it out there but for now proxy hatch apparently has been his go-to recently he's playing on an account called proxy hatch he's going for a proxy hatch into double gas so it looks like a proxy hatch ravager rush unfortunately for him uh, the Terran player, we're going to call him um, Omtilk. Omtilk. So Omtilk uh, is going to scout and see the double gas, which means you immediately know it's Ravages. So you're like, okay, I'm getting Proxy Ash Ravages. Command Center is going up on the high ground, which I would argue is kind of greedy. But as long as you build some bunkers up here, you should be safe. You know what's weird? He's actually droning. Reaper is not pulling off minerals onto gas. He's actually still droning. And he's building a queen from the expansion. Normally with this, you'd get the roach horn a fair bit faster. And you'd be looking to pump roaches out here as quickly as possible. You'd be on like 15 workers. But this is actually a much less committed version. This is almost like a macro proxy hatch. So I think his goal here is to contain the Terran player. Keep him on one base for a while. And then somehow turn this to an advantage. I don't know how. I'm looking at this I'm like... Because the problem is, like, he gets a command center up on the high ground. Yeah, you could slow him down from landing. But he's going to get tanks out on the high ground. They're going to cover most of that area. This is going to be really difficult for him to do. The Reaper comes in, does get pushed back by the Queen. Sorry, I missed that. Three Roaches are on the way right now. Proxy Hatch on 22 drones, aka we'll just call him Reaper. So Reaper's on, on 22 drones. He's got three Ravagers coming out. He's spreading creep forward, which I guess he can use creep to deny the expansion. And he is getting the over response. Second bunker on the high ground because Omtilk is seeing no expansion. He's saying, well, versus one base player, I've got to take no risks here. Like, look at this. I've got no Marines out. I need to get these bunkers up as quickly as possible. And those first three roaches are out. There's enough gas to morph them all into ravages. I imagine Reaper's going to do that and start sieging this. He's got the Overlord there. That's going to be the pervert to spot the high ground. He's going to try and bile down the depots, maybe the bunkers as well. But with the siege tank already started, Omtilk is all over it. Notice Omtilk delayed building the starport to get the gas for the factory in the siege tank. And that's going to zone out the Ravagers. So I don't really see him getting any damage done. Maybe he picks off one or two depots. Doesn't look like Omtilk is willing to repair that depot. I think he just realizes it's a bit too exposed. It's too hard to repair it on those little angles. So he's going to back off for now. The Ravagers... Ooh, they're going to get two depots actually. Not bad, not bad. Siege tank will come in. I mean, I say not bad, but like, what are you going to do as your follow-up? A lair is on the way. Okay. But what are you going to do? Drone this base? I mean, this base is so exposed out in the middle of nowhere. We've got more queens building. He's non-stop building queens from the proxy. And a lot of people will build a Banshee to push this back. Banshee's not going to work if you've got three queens. He's also building a Spork Roller back at home, just in case I guess there's like a battle cruiser that comes out or something like that. But now it is going to be Siege Shanks, Marines, and Reaper trying to push to the low ground. But the creep is there, and I think it's just barely... I'm pretty sure that's barely in range, blocking the expansion. He's going to try to take out that Tumor. The Ravages, the Queen's going to come forward. He can put another Tumor down there. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, he's just getting them just in range. Or he's like, if you want to get rid of that, you need to move your Siege Tank to the low ground. That's so irritating. Omtok's going to be tilted by this. The Reaper and the Marines there. The Widowmine's starting to work their way down the ramp. Building Hellions now. Notice it was just a single Siege Tank. But he might regret that. If this tank goes down, he doesn't really have anything else to defend behind this. An infestation pit's on the way. What the hell? Oh my god. Okay. 
Reaper is such a dirty boy, dude. He's so friggin' dirty. I love it. So he's gonna use this forward base. He's built a few drones for it. Not that many, just a few. And then he's gonna pump Swarmos out of here and start using the creep to deny his opponent's expansion and start just whittling him down with those free units using Ravages and Queens as a really micro-intensive flexible army on the front as well. I think if you're going Stim, you can deal with this. With Hellions, not so well because the Ravages and Queens can stop them. On the other hand though, a Battlecruiser started up right now. Oh my god. Okay, so problem. Three Queens does not beat a Battlecruiser. Even with Transfuse, they're going to really struggle against one or two BCs. And you can only build them one at a time at the front. You can't reinforce or run home. If you give up this base, obviously you're on one base, you lose the game as Zerg. So he needs to get more done here. And those Swarm Hosts are definitely going to be somewhat effective, but I really worry that the Battlecruisers are going to catch him completely off guard. Reaper's coming forward. He doesn't know about these two Widow Mines just yet. It's going to be hard to see because the Command Center. The Command Center is kind of blocking. Like, we know that there's a Widow Mine under there because we can see that little outline. I'm pretty sure the players don't get those uh, those outlines, especially not for a burrowed unit. That's just like a, a nice little advantage of the Observer interface. Here we go, Hellions there. One of them gets picked off, Ravages moving in and out. Let's go to Transfuse. Okay, very nice Transfuse. We've got the first five Swarmers here on the front right now. Reaper coming in with five Swarmers. He says, hey, Terran, have you heard about our Lord and Savior? Free units. Dives in on top. Already one Widowmine goes off on the Hellions. The tank tries to on Siege. He's trying to run back up the ramp. Looks like the Siege tank does barely escape but he's losing both Widow Mines on the low ground as well as a bunch of SCVs. Nice move by the Ravages coming in to get on top of that as well. That SCV goes down. Four Queens going to try and fight the BC. I guess with this Transfuse, they probably can take that fight, especially since the Battlecruiser is actually focusing the Ravages. It's not trying to take on the Queens now. It changes targets. Every single Transfuse gets used. That Queen needs to get out of there. Oh, great pullback micro. Beautiful. And dodges the Corrosive Bile, does teleport back into the main base. One tank, a pack of Hellbats, and a Battlecruiser. If he could mine somewhere else right now, Omtilt could potentially get himself in a good spot. As it is, though, he's got a second Battlecruiser and nothing else. On the other hand, two BCs beats the crap out of five Queens. They've used all of their Transfuse energy. By the time he repairs this up, that's going to be on full hit points. He can dive both Battlecruisers, and what are you going to have? Six Queens. Six Queens with very few Transfuse. He's building Spores. He's trying to go Neural Parasite since he already has the tech for that. Oh, the next Locust Wave gets the Siege Tank. They're going to take out a Hellbat as well. Two Hellbats actually go down there. And the Ravagers pushing in the front as well. Battlecruiser is going to be needed to defend that. The Hellions not getting biled down. The Hellions and the Battlecruisers do take down one of the Ravagers. Only two Ravagers left. There's 10 Queens on this map, but remember, quite a few of them, I believe, are in his main base. He's got six Queens on this side. Yep, four or five Queens back in his main right now. Oh my god, this is so awkward. Reaper does have Neuroparasite coming, but he needs to buy time for Neuroparasite. And this is the scary moment, those two Battlecruisers. But the Spore Crawlers plus Transfuse are helping him zone him out. The Hellbats can't really take these units out that well. The Battlecruisers are going to die if they say, okay, one Spore Crawler, we think we can tank that damage. But you can see, even though they've got rid of all the Transfuse, one of the Battlecruisers is very low. Gets rid of a Queen, but he has to go back to repair. I feel like what he could do is bring the SCVs to repair in combat. As I say that, that's a dumb idea because he just uses locusts and he'd kill all the repairing SCVs, but maybe just repair here and then go back in, go in and out, because those queens aren't going to regenerate their transfusers very quickly, are they? And look at that. He has to go and kill the creep tumor on behind the natural because he can't get that up the hell. That's in a big ball. Hell that's do pretty well versus locusts, but this is not that many. And remember, they don't have blue flame in this game. Oh, the locusts come in. Once again, a few SCVs and a few Hellbats do go down. One more Hellbat falls at the very tail end of that before the last Locust goes down. Battlecruiser Hellion's going to try to counterattack, I think, while those are out. Infestors are out. They're going to have Neuroparasite in about seven seconds. Hellbats running forward to fight the Queens. I think he's just got to commit. Omtilk has to be confident here and commit. It's such a scary situation, though, because obviously if you lose these units, you are completely out. The Mass Transfuse on top of that. The Corrosive Bile does get dodged, but oh, the Raider Boy Battlecruiser, you can't afford to lose that. You cannot afford to lose that Battlecruiser. The Hellbats that's end up sacrificing himself. They get a spore. They get one or two queens. The queen energy is low, but I feel like Omtilk needs to bring more SCVs. Speed repair. Get back in. Go back. Repair. Get back in there. Needs to up the ante of the fighting and really use the repair to do that because that's got to be way more important than Cyclones and Hellion production. Locust going to get thrown into the main base right now. Proxy Hatch here announces his intention at the start of the game by making his account named Proxy Hatch. And yet just it's it's so hard to be ready because this is such a weird off meta proxy hatch this is not what you expect it's such a strange version of it oh and he's gonna neural them but wait the yamato was already cast the yamato completes canceling the neural parasite all three infestors go down oh not a great move but the swarm hosts aren't really dying that fast a few of them go down the roaches and the ravages killing some scvs there might just be enough queens at this point 
He's got to mass repair these battle cruisers. That's got to be the play. As I said, there's 12 queens on the map, but remember, only six, seven of them on the front. There's two spork rulers as well. If he could have got a third battle cruiser out and just mass repaired, I really think he could have overwhelmed the anti air here, especially because we saw what happened to Neural. Where even if you neural a unit, if it's already Yamatoing, the Yamato doesn't get interrupted. It will finish the Yamato and then it's under your control, basically. Um, the Yamato is like mid channel, it doesn't get cancelled. And that's a, a problem there because now he's lost his big anti battlecruiser trump card. But I guess the thing is, I think Omtilk is being a little bit too cautious, a bit too afraid of committing in. It's scary, but I think you, you just gotta fight. I think you just gotta fight one of these spore crawlers, you know? Try to get in there. You've got Yamato as well, right? Yamato, a couple of these queens uh, can be nice. It's going to be back off cooldown in 10 seconds. So one more queen goes down. Yeah, mass, mass repair in combat. Why not? That's the way to do it. Coming on forward, but more Spore Krillers are building. And every time he goes out of Spore range in and out like that, he's taking more damage than he's dealing it. The Battle Cruiser is a shorter ranged unit than these other units. It's only six range. Spore Krill, I think, is seven. And the Queen is also, I believe, seven. So they do slightly outrange the Battle Cruiser. Going in and out like that is always going to favor the longer ranged units. Reaper, though, he's got his contain up. He's also taking gases on this expansion. He's also taking another base up here at the top of the map. And he's got some new investors coming out. They are burrowed. He's going to have a new Neural Parasite in the near future. Queens are there. That Spore Krill, it does take a fair bit of damage. But he's got Transfusers available. Those Battle Cruisers getting hammered right now. Oh, a Queen almost goes down. But that was almost a bait there. Mass Repair comes in. Nice Yamato from Omtilk. He takes out another one of these queens. That Battle Cruiser in the red, though, very weak. Two queens do go down. How many queens we got left on the front? Looks like six queens still. He's just constantly building queens. You can't get through it. This is such a problem. Omtilk essentially is being just constrained by this cancerous zerg style i'm gonna hide a hatchery here surround your base and just be an absolute bag of zerg dongles man this is gross this is gross i can only i mean the thing is i would have died like 10 minutes ago if i was in omtilk shoes so i kind of feel for him here because you're like well this feels embarrassing my opponent announced their strategy with the literal name of their account but look at that oh the battle cruiser gets pulled in with the neural the queens are attacking it. The spore crawlers are turned on it. Oh, the battle cruiser gets killed before it can uh, break neural and teleport out. There's only one battle cruiser left. The Hellion Cyclone. Cyclone Hellion's normally pretty good versus Swarmos, but not if they have you locked in your base like this. And now with Corruptors out, the hard counter to the battle cruisers, that's going to be an absolute nasty. Oh, even unburrows and infested the fungal the Hellion Cyclone. Corrosive files on the retreating SCVs. And welcome to D-Town, says Mr. Proxy Hatch. Reaper, you are a foul beast. You are a foul creature. But you know what? He must have lost so many games learning these strategies, figuring them out. And this is, this is, I think, a testament to just having focus and a plan and refinement in StarCraft. If you work hard on improving a plan, getting better at it, and figuring out the details, you can make just about anything happen in this game. You know, a lot of people are always looking for what's the best style, what's the right way to play right now, what's the meta way to play. But I always feel like the players who just go and are interested in a style and find a way to make it work always end up having a deeper understanding of how to win even in suboptimal situations i mean we can look at dark as a pro gamer example of this a player who always finds a way to win no matter what the hell is going on in the game and i just think that's essentially uh, such a huge thing because so many players if they just copy all the time they never get to the point where they kind of figure things out for themselves so I just wanted to look at the vision because I didn't look at this guy. So if you look at the Terran player's vision, right, he sees this. I'm pretty sure he scouted for the proxy hatchery. Let's go to the Terran's vision. And you can see, yeah, he sends out the Reaper. He also sends the SCV. Does he look for the proxy hatch? No, he doesn't really look for it too much. But so he doesn't. Yeah, the thing is, even if you do, would you really check this base? Like I might check up here. I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't have thought to check there. So it actually isn't for many, many minutes until he realizes that this creep kind of encroaching towards his base. This is a dirty build. I love it. I gotta try this one, man. This is super cool. All right, into the next one. And what the bloody hell, guys? Okay, okay. We've got Reaper in the top right on his Proxy Hatch account. His opponent is a world champion. This is Rainer from Vasilisk Esports. And surely there is no, <laughs> no way you could Proxy Hatch in ZVZ when your opponent knows it's coming. Uh, 12 pool is on the way right now, so 12 pool, not particularly surprising. Rainer, it looks like, is just doing a very standard opening 13 Overlord into a 14th drone. Rainer is one of the best micro players in the world. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the goalposts for Reaper, guys. If Reaper can make this game close and make Rainer sweat, I'm counting this as a victory and a very impressive game. 
I do not expect him to have any real chance of victory. And he, he's going to send a drone across. That's not an expanding drone. That's a... I'm going to... So he's going to rally Zerglings across. And he's going to try and either proxy hatch or maybe just build a spine crawler on the creep that, that uh, comes out of Rainer's hatchery. Either way, I don't really know how proxy hatch can help you in ZVZ unless you're doing Sex Panther. For those who don't know Sex Panther... It's a build I invented specifically because it's so stupid it shouldn't work, where you proxy a hatchery, say, over here, build three spine crawlers, and then you run the spine crawlers into their base at about the four or five minute mark with a, uh, a Ling Flood. It's it's a really dumb build. It's it's not really meant to work. It's just a meme, you know? <laughs> what is this? So he's like, I'm going to build a hatchery. The thing is, there's already going to be creep from that base. So if you want to build spine crawlers there, you could just build it on his creep, couldn't, couldn't you? So I don't... I mean, I guess technically if the fight drags on, you can build Zerglings and Queens out of this base, but otherwise this is ridiculous. So he's going to keep most of his drones mining. He's got 10 drones mining at home. Rainer immediately pulls a big pack of drones. That's actually a very big drone pull. Interesting. So Rainer's just going to try and stop the hatchery, but this is only worth it if he kills the hatchery. If he doesn't kill the hatchery, oh, he needed to pull a few more drones. If he wanted to kill the hatchery and force the cancel, he needed to pull a few more. It's down to 50 hit points, but he can't stay there with the Zerglings attacking him. Rainer has to pull back. And Rainer is unable to cancel the hatchery. Spinecrawl is going to start building. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, God. Guys, guys, guys. That's a choke point. He's actually created a choke point that he can defend. Over here, there's a choke point as well. Technically, Rainer could go around the top, but that's going to take forever. He's got to cancel those spines. He cannot let these three spine crawlers finish. He's building one spine crawler of his own. He's building his own Zerglings. 12 Zerglings on the way for Rainer right now. He has a lot of stuff coming out, and he's got a numbers advantage, but Reaper has the positional advantage, and he's absolutely getting that win condition of making Rainer sweat right now. Rainer's going to drill the drones through and try to get on top, but look at this. He's pulling back. He realizes his spine crawlers are almost finished. He doesn't need to fight until the spines are done. He's going to avoid the engagement. He might have actually been able to take that fight. I think he had even or maybe one or two more Zerglings, but he actually goes past. Rainer can't run back past the spine crawlers. He has to go across the map. That's not going to work, though. He's going to go across the map. Reaper's like, okay, that's cool. You're going across the map. He's going to move his spines in the main. If he gets rid of your spawning pool, you're mining. You're screwed. The spines are running up there right now. The Zerglings for Rainer turning around. Reaper coming in with the dirtiest of cheeses. The drones are pulled off the line. The Lings are getting a good surround on the Queen. Lings here in the mineral in between the spine crawlers doing what they can as well. That's a lot of Lings for Rainer, though. I think Rainer might have enough to just hold this because all of the Lings of Reaper are gone. Remember, his Lings are a bit slow to get back across the map because Rainer, by threatening the counterattack, forced him to pull those home. That being said, spine crawlers have two armor. They do a ton of damage as well. And these Zerglings are getting absolutely hammered by them. But the remaining spine crawler for Rainer will hold on. He's got 15 drones, which means he is pretty far ahead. But actually, he doesn't have any queens. And, and Reaper's got the forward hatchery. So he's able to build Zerglings in the base. So he can reinforce way quicker than a normal 12 pool can. And he's effectively got the same overall production. Two hatch first, two hatch. The Zerglings trying to get on top of the spine crawler. Reaper going hard on that. That might be an overcommitment. He gets the spine crawler into the red but it definitely cost him quite a few Zerglings. That being said, he's forcing Rainer off the mining. And whenever Rainer's off the mining, the 10 drones is mining more than the 15. So you've got to take into account that factor. Queen's about to pop out here as well for him. We've got a lot more Zerglings for Reaper. He's up about 12 Zerglings right now. The Queen's going to come in. The Queen's trying to focus the Spine Crawler down. Oh, he's not able to do it. He's going to click on it now. He realizes he's got to get rid of that ranged damage output of the Spine Crawler. That thing is such a good defensive anchor. Rainer's drones are being forced off the line. He's outnumbered right now. The fact that these Lings are popping into the fight off this proxy hatch. I cannot believe it's actually being used so well as a reinforcing hatchery after being used to create a choke point. Reaper bringing out the most disgusting of builds. Dude, this is still so close. The Lings for Rainer get a nice angle. They managed to catch one of his Lings, almost get a second one. Reaper's trying to pull back. He loses another Zergling. And they're heavily damaged, but the numbers advantage. Oh, with that reinforced, that numbers advantage. 23 versus 11. Rainer only has a three worker advantage and he can't afford a queen. He can't afford a spine crawler or anything like that right now. Without a spine crawler or something in this mineral line, he's in big trouble. And these Zerglings running in and out. Reaper trying to make the best of this micro situation. Rainer is out microing him ever so slightly in those trades, but only slightly. He's getting like one or two extra hits in. That's not going to make up for this difference in numbers. And that fight there, that's good for Reaper. Look at the way he's staying on the edge of the mineral line so he doesn't get lured into a surround. He's just staying there, taking even fights, and even fights are good. If you've got way more Zerglings, an even fight is all you really need. Rainer trying to hold on the mineral line, massing Zerglings. But look, his other Zerglings are popping out in a very dangerous area. It's so hard for Rainer to even get these Zerglings out of that expansion right now, as they're, they're always in danger of getting surrounded. Reaper's, there we go. He separates those four Zerglings. He says, yeah, that's fine, no worries. Rainer does take a four versus two Zergling fight, but in the main mineral line at the same time, he's massively getting swarmed. And at this point, I think Reaper's just going to commit. Reaper realizes he's got the numbers advantage. He's just going to go for it right now. 
Oh, this is such a close fight. Reyna with some really good drone micro drilling through, but he just doesn't have the damage output. He loses so many units. He's down to just eight drones. Reyna now with a big Ling advantage, though. Uh, at least here, but overall, he's still down two Zerglings. He's still down two Zerglings overall. He wants to get rid of that hatchery so badly. Lings are popping out, and Reaper's trying to get them away into that main base. He's going to go after some of those drones in the main. Oh, one of those drones is on red. He's going to go after it. He's going to get a drone there. He's going to go after another. Meanwhile, at the front, look at that. He lures Rainer out into the open. More Lings pop into flank, and Rainer's units holding the choke point. Go down! Rainer has to tap out. Proxy Hatch Reaper takes down Rainer. On an account called Proxy Hatch. I, I, this is so truly impressive. To have your account name announce your strategy at the start and to still beat Rainer with it, that's a goddamn trophy that you deserve, Reaper. GG, well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you want to check out other games of Reaper and other creative players, click on one of these other games on the screen and let me know if you're excited to see more Reaper games in the future. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.